Well, DP's teleport. He ha ha ha, he canceled one. That's pretty big. Nightmare's gonna be able to throw out the stun and the soul fife in two. He's gonna fall. And now we've got a big engagement going on in middle. It looks like Enigma's trying to get a black hole off, but they get the tower in the end. Oh god, the vacuum. He's propped the jump charge. He's trying to get out, and Jerry. Oh, that was such a beautiful oh. sprout there. Double TP, and, and they're safe. Gonna get out, so, yeah. Objectives uh, I mean, taken. Batrider gave his life to cancel a TP, but, I mean, I don't know. They got the Tier 2 tower, but they lost the Tier 2 tower. I mean, a lot of, a lot of wacky trades going on here. This is the kind of game Tisha wants to play, just to buy themselves some time, just kind of throw some chaos into the mix so that it's not just uh, not today grouping up and taking objectives. Taking that really is what they're looking for, though. Ground. Absolutely, 100%. They're looking to just buy time for Slark to become an absolute monster. He's got 1,900 gold he's already sitting on, so between the Midas and just efficiently farming on top of it, he's doing very well. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised the Enigma is actually as broke as he is here. He had a really good start, pre-uncontested jungle, and then, you know, fortunately he got involved in those early scuffles and paid for his life a few times here. I mean, if this is not like the... The enigmas we've been seeing in Shanghai, like puppy played enigmas, where you're sitting on like level 12 right now, and you've got like your next item finished. Well, hey, but, puppy uh, and puppy enigma jungle is <laughs> something completely different that we're looking to compare here, yeah, man. Let's a, be real. Yeah, it's style is really aggressive, even with these these types of heroes they've drafted they they really wanted to try to get stuff done and, and be around the map and you know yes it did kind of cost them. Oh, but they're gonna black hole juggernaut solo here, dropping everything on him. Oh, the Nature's Prophet Sprout barely catches him. Oh, the finger. finger! The finger of death brings him down. So that black hole was almost a disaster. If they didn't kill Juggernaut there, that would have been horrible for them. But Lanaro looks like he might be in a little bit of a rough spot here in mid. He's able to blink back to safety. He's got the Firefly already already cooking. So they'll be able to take down that whole creep wave. They're trying to yeah. preserve this mid tower as best as they can. And the Enigma might be able to catch out Nightmare. I don't think so. Just a little bit outside of vision. Yeah, Slark definitely picked up that Midas, so Just barely um, out of vision. he's doing what he needs to do here. He is getting his farm quick. I mean, we saw him get a Midas at 11 minutes, and in 4 minutes he farmed a 2200 gold item, so... Honestly, I mean, that Midas could have been later, and that and that Blink Dagger could have even been earlier, for all we know. Yeah, he's he's net worth leader by 1k. He Okay, Juggernaut was um, was like an almost 1k lead like going into the end of the lane phase, and Slark, man, has just gone crazy. And I know Juggernaut died once to the black hole and the the finger and everything, but I mean, T shows T shows showing up to play, man. They're not just rolling over after the 4-0 start that Not Today had. They've got a pretty sizable XP net worth lead too, but uh, Not Today's about to take the Roche, so that's about. To oh yeah, out. it's such a super fast Roshan. They've got Enchantress tanking with the Untouchable, so it's up, taking forever. They don't have black hole available. Oh, they know or with the Triant, Lanaro, he's already used Firefly, and he's committed the Blink Dagger back too, so it's gonna be a little bit harder for them to go and Oh Juggernaut Juggernaut's got the Aegis after the Dyer got the kill on it. Oh, so that's so that huge. Flame break gets the last hit. And now with the Aegis Juggernaut, is... Juggernaut and two dead on the side of T Show, this is an absolute disaster. <laughs> Juggernaut oh, actually got pushed onto the high ground by the Batrider, and then Venge swapped him back out. So he was yeah. able to you know, do something. And once again, it seems like Tisha is just trying to do a little too much when their lineup's not quite ready for it. They didn't have their two of their big ultimates available there, and they still didn't get the Aegis. And now they've given up a lot of momentum uh, back towards not today. Yeah, the, Man, just all, all these, these drums. Dire words, so many drums. I love that the Radiant are going to have two drums up in just a moment. And, you know, for them to get even more drums, whatever, man. It's just drums gaming. That's that's what this patch is all about. Drums and pushing. Oh, Give everybody so moving speed. The jug's not here, and Chug's just going to casually spin away like, I'm ah, cool. Yeah. It's a pretty late uh, battle for you pick up for him, considering he was he had such a huge start in this game. Yeah, that 18-minute. How dare he have a almost 18-minute battle fury after drums and phase. Sure, but uh, this is a jug that had first blood and complete free farm and farmed up a six stack of Eidolons. They've got four towers and an Arushan to boot. I mean, he did fall off quite a bit. Sark's got a 1300 gold lead on him here. Sark's mm -hmm. looking to get some, some stuff done solo. I'm just kind of blinking and dancing around, waiting for somebody and not today to get out of position, but it's always the juggernaut he finds. It's not the enchantress or one of the easier to kill targets for him. 
Yeah, and Tisho have now grouped up bottom. There's a little bit of fortified band thrown out there. They're going to try and contest it, and Lenaro has already blinked in for it, and Jeppy's been grabbed immediately. There's the finger, and with the Nature's Prophet bounce, they're actually able to take him out, and they are definitely going to look to keep pushing here. Oh, yeah, they, get a, they get a tier 2 tower and a nice little consolation prize. Absolutely. Um, Juicy little enchantress. Black hole. They don't have any sort of mobility on their Enigma, so... Um, they have to be very careful because like this Darkseer can easily just like ruin everybody's day and vacuum them into a big wall. Then you've got your Death Prophet Salt, you've got your Juggernaut with, you know, is going to run in and use his Aegis and, and slash her face off. I mean, hey, Batrider's almost got his four staff. He's going to be an absolute machine then. The initiation potential is just going to be huge. And Enigma sitting at 1650 gold right now. He could choose to get a Guardian Grieve if he wanted to. A uh, better option probably be to go towards a Blink Dagger. But the Greaves are coming because they're going for the push. He's putting all his reliance on the Bat Rider to make these big initiations for him. And then with a the Lion, he's sitting on 1200 almost. So we'll know soon if he's going straight for the Ags or if a Blink Dagger is going to be on his radar as well. Yeah, the thing I'm not a huge fan about... Uh, as far as having Batrider mid, if it's not like a lane counter, is uh, I mean, look at Batrider. He's not able to really flash farm, and especially when you have like a jungling hero, you can't fall back on support stacks in the jungle. He's fallen off. Like he's got he's got off lane level farm for a mid hero, and he's not like a semi carry or or like a hard carry. So their lineup is gonna run into a little bit of trouble when it comes to actually bringing down all these heroes during a black hole. It's pretty much all on the Slurk and the Nature's Prophet. And, well, I mean, Nature's maybe, Prophet's going to have an Aghanims very soon. Yeah, maybe He's going to be looking for that push. Aghanims, and they get like a really big ultimate. But I mean, we're at the 19 minute mark. Juggernaut's knocking on your tier 3 and you've got a Force Link mid-hero. Yeah, they got to they gotta get some use out of this Aegis here. And Enigma is postured. He's looking for the fight. Lenaro's now been screamed on, so he can't blink for the, for the brief moment. And with the Firefly coming down, they're going to look to pressure the tower with the high ground. Death yeah, Prophet Ult is just going to be able to take it down. They can't the contest that. Generating, though. They don't have Ford, unfortunately. Oh, the creeps yeah. aren't there. Yeah, they burn it down through the protection. He now they've tanked got a, a lot of HP with that Aegis. Yeah, if they're going to make a move, they need to do it now. They're about to lose Rax. Well, there goes the range Rax, and Melee Rax are about halfway down. And oh, there goes the Omni Slash on the Enigma. Yeah, Enigma it's going to fall immediately. Immediately. No chance to black hole with the Juggernaut all completely focused on him. Wow. Looks like Vengeful Spirit. Oh, they, they Vengeful got Spirit's nothing. gonna die to that. Yeah, Vengeful Spirit gets picked off on the backside. I mean, but, Nature's Prophet was I doing mean, a lot of pressure mid. If you take a look, he did get the tier three. Oh, the finger kills Enchantress in the base. <laughs> she just died in her own base right when the TP finished. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, they weren't able to get the black hole off, and they didn't. Like they just gave up a rack, so they got two return kills. But uh -oh. I mean, I think they're going for Nature's it. Prophet. I feel like they he uses drum committed. charge. He's running. He'll be able to get away. They're not going to keep pursuing on that. I feel like they should have committed there. They wouldn't have been able to close space enough. They don't have a blink on Darks here. He used the drum charge. He was out. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Lanaro's now picked yeah. up a gem. Or I guess, you know, ZZX has for him. And he just countered out a lot of vision. Yeah, this game's, uh, this game's all on the back of Slark right now. It's... Their whole lineup, it's. I mean, their I mean, I don't want to say that was their plan off the get go, but with that no, late no, Midas pickup, it had to have been. This is the situation they're in now. They're down a Rax, they're against the lineup that's going to death ball, take the next Roche, and go for a second lane of Rax. That's their timing. So their Slark's going to need to get like some game winning farm and make some big plays. They're going to need a good black hole. Um, but, I mean, if you look at the side of not today, they're starting to get some really big item pickups. You've almost got your Octarine Core on DP. Your Juggernaut's looking to get a Manta or maybe just his Yasha to accelerate his farm into some other big item. Enchantress is starting to, to come online, even though she's like a, a support role. She's going to start to become like, you know, something to deal with. And your Darkseer almost has a blink, and he's got a mech too. So they've got all these tools to give them such a great high ground push. And your Slark is like your main damage output here and he's got to kill all these tanky heroes through all of their healing and rely on his team to lock them down for him so just taking a look at all of the items everyone has spread across the board we know jug has the yasha now death prophet has the soul booster already completed we can expect an octarine core to come out relatively soon from her Aghanim's now up online on nature's prophet so the push is going to be even stronger if it wasn't already and slark he's sitting on a juicy amount of gold he's got the courier sitting at 
the secret shot, and he's going to have his Scotty any second now. So that is going to be great for him to finally be able to have an even bigger impact in these fights because, you know, HPM's revivability is part of his biggest concern right now. Yeah, he's going to need, like, I think he's going to need Moon Shards after this Scotty before he's really able to, like, to be that super slark carry that can just go in and 1v5 everyone. But uh, they've they've used the smoke here. They're going to bait their Juggernaut and push him up middle, it looks like. There's the Scotty. They can see a fresh Ion Shell if they check, uh, if they check the Juggernaut out. So they're going to know something's up here. And now he's ioning, uh, ion shelling himself up here. I think they're hoping that Brat Rider's gonna jump on this Juggernaut here and they're gonna bait it. But Death Prophet pops the smoke and gets a little too close. So, I mean, the trap is not real here. No. Chantress is gonna run in on the back and kind of be a nuisance here. Um, uh oh, they've Brat committed Rider a lot on Brat Rider. He fireflies up, but he doesn't get into the base in time. Yeah, that and four staff used way too early. Oh, Juggernaut, Juggernaut now picking up the up. gem. But check out middle, check out top. Slark has now pushed everything into the base, and that's forcing back three rotations. Wow, but they catch him. They catch him they with the Yules immediately, him. and a she silence. She misses the silence, though. She misses the silence. Oh, so he's God. just going to blink leap out, and he's fine. That frame perfect silence didn't happen. Yeah, yeah that was great, uh, a great shot by Slark to make space here. And I mean, they got the Batrider pick, and they wanted to get the Tier 2 tower, but Slark being exactly where he needed to be, doing the right thing for his team here. He's got another 1,000 gold. He really needs to get his next item online to be to be a devastating force in these upcoming team fights. Juggernaut now picking up his Sage and Yasha, so he's going to be even crazier in these fights. He's got all that extra movement speed now. He's going to be running at 5.22. You can see with his phase on his own, he's running at 5.03. So someone proccing a jump charge for him, he's running at max movement speed, hands down. He'll be able to chase down anybody. He's, he's fast, man. He's fast and he's furious. Where's he at? Uh, okay, he's not level 16 yet. He's getting pretty close, though. So he's going to have that, like, critical mass, you know, Aegis, level 16, SNY, Battle Fury, one item. Got a smoke coming out from T-Show here. They're looking to maybe secure Roshan. They choose to pop a bounty rune, and now they're looking to rotate on mid. Smoked, and they're all going to There's be double right smokes, now. but I think T-Show's going to find the better smoke, though. Vengeful Spirits on the back. They're looking to pincer from the behind. Meanwhile, at the front, Enigma's getting initiated on. There's a Soul Siphon. He's going to go down. Guardian Greaves aren't going to do anything for them. And then they choose to just start split pushing lanes. You know. Yeah, this is this is their, their This is what they need to do. The they need to keep the lanes pushed. They need to cut the waves. They're going to need somebody to clear this creep wave, though, or else they're going to be able to threaten their uh, their base. Well, lions, the Radiant aren't going to be able to continue pushing mid. Uh-oh, there's two creeps. There's two creeps is all they need to be able to push the base. Yeah, it looks like the fort's gonna get used here in the beginning of the Death Prophet ult. The ghosts are ripping into the tower. Meanwhile, oh, Nature's Prophet is so many trees racks, chunking away the racks on their side. And we've got the ghosts on the other side. Slark's poking at the top, but I don't know if this is so much as a base race as oh, not today is just taking what they want. Well, Slark did, they unfortunately weren't able to get any damage done on not today's base, and not today. It looks like they're going to get two set of racks here unless Slark can get in there and get some work done. Oh, they're able to hex out Vengeful Spirit. Oh, He's going to drop, and there goes the Juggernaut as well. Nolan Narrow is going to jump forward with that Blink Dagger. And here comes the Sprout on the Death Prophet. And I think she's just going to be able to get away too. Absolutely. So all we've got left now is the Enchantress. She's getting poked away. She doesn't have a TP scroll. She knows she's dead. She bought out as much as she can. And here goes Slark. He's now up out of a killing spree. Wow. Both? Oh, man. I felt... I felt like that was a big misplay on the part of, uh, not today. They got both racks under half HP, but they didn't focus either one of them. That, that could whole have, the melee fight racks pick was T-Show. That very fight least, was they could have said, Yeah, we gave away three heroes, but we got a second lane of racks and look to just threaten the third and keep the other two lanes pushed. But now, I mean, T-Show's on the rampage. They've got like this 15 second window where they can go back for that melee racks they didn't finish off. I mean, Jogan and Chantress, I mean, they're not going to buy back for this. So I feel like this should be their racks. They should be able to even the game up here. Early fortified. Fortify They're going to be able to break down a lot the of those summons. Black hole still available. Oh, the Darkseer um, combo is pretty good. But everybody's uh -oh. got Enigma's ability. now been swapped into it. He's going to take all of the damage. He's going to be segmented away from his team. And he's just going to fall. Darkseer has all of these illusions out because he got a great vac wall on three. And I think they might be able to get Nature's Prophet here too. He led yeah, him with the Sprout and the beat. Silence and Spirit Siphon. He's going to fall. Another gem has now fallen for T Show. He got it to 100 HP. So now it looks like not today's going to regenerate. It's just a game of counters, man. 
Everyone's counter push in middle. This is very uh, almost pub note worthy of people just running back and forth at each other's bases. <laughs> um, yeah, Ben's uh, doing some dewording with that gem there. There we go. Double gem. Whoops, I didn't get the fire cut. Man, the graph is just, it's not relevant. This game is just all about momentum right now. The momentum is on the side of not today. They're going to finish off both of those racks they didn't get earlier. So Tisho getting way too aggressive on the counter push there. They got excited. They saw a window of opportunity and they... Uh, Did you see that Darkseer picked up a Lotus Orb? Yep. And he's Lotus been throwing Orb. it on the Juggernaut in pretty much yeah, every fight. Yeah, they can't lasso him. He's, Batrider's going to lasso himself, and their Juggernaut's going to be just fine. They can't finger him to burst him down. There's a lot of things they can't do, and Juggernaut's just going to lay into the buildings. I mean, they can't even contest this Roshan here. They want to smoke and go to it, but they're not going to make it in time. They used the Death Rock Adult to make sure that they would kill it quickly and safely. Now then, in the next 90 seconds, you're going to look to see Not Today threatening the top uh, T2 and Tier 3 with that Aegis. So, T-Show's got to decide, do we smoke up and go for the five-man fight here? Or do we just keep trying to cut waves and base trade? And, uh, unfortunately, they have a lot less of their base left. So, it's not going to... It's a very difficult position for them to be in right now. Although, Sark does have his Moon Shards. All of them? <laughs> He didn't eat one and buy a new one, if that's what you mean. That was what I meant. So he's got one Moon Shard, so that's cool. He's got a ton of attack speed, 0.48, and as he starts to get that Essence Shift stacks up, he's just going to be even more of a monster. Matrix Prophet now has a Maelstrom, too, so he's looking for the right-click push potential. Yeah, he's going to need to clear waves. He's Absolutely. He's going to need to spawn trees, send trees between every single lane. He's got to do his absolute best to buy just a little more time here. I mean, they have their cooldowns. It looks like Enigma might go straight into like a BKB here, but he hasn't been able to get any good black holes off. Yeah, they've been able to do so much work on Enigma in all these fights because they're throwing a negative earn charge on Enigma at the off the get go. So they're still kind of doing it with the anticipation that Enigma has a blink dagger, but they're just picking him off. They're swapping him in, and he's getting picked off every single time. How many black holes have we seen this game? Three. Well, we saw a one-man black hole and a two-man black hole where they traded, but, uh... Oh, yeah, and we did see a third where they brought down the Jug in their own jungle. So, yeah, I believe three. And one, two one-mans and a two-man hole. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a blink BKB. It, it's gonna be unrealistic for him to get anything off here, but they're gonna catch the Juggernaut out here. They're gonna blow everything on him. The Lion stuns himself. That Lotus Orb used, used way too late, but... Get out of here, though. Slark's gonna go in. He's going in on that Death Prophet. He's doing a lot of damage. He gets silenced up, but he doesn't care. He's gonna get swapped out immediately. The There's the Dark Seer wall back, and then the Black Hole. Oh no! Death. It's a disaster. Lenaro's trying to TP out. He's been Soul Siphoned, and now he's gonna get thrown immediately into the air. Oh, Jerry's just gonna be able to right click him down with the help of Juggernaut and friends. Yeah, I feel like once they got that kill on the Aegis, they needed to immediately evacuate. And they probably could have gotten out without any losses there. But Slark decided to go in, and the team followed suit, and they end up trading two heroes there. And they, I mean, Slark's they did still get alive. the Jug. He's pushing but, mid. Mean, yeah, I don't know, man. It, <laughs> Jug actually got boots to travel so he could buy back and get there, but uh, I don't know, man. I don't know that that was the play. I feel like the free Aegis and escape was was a better choice. They lost their their black hole, their Enigma, and their Bat Raider, so they're not going to have any of these tools. Oh, meanwhile, middle looks like we have a little tussle. I don't know what you want to call that. I mean, they're trying to threaten that Rax, but Juggernaut's back there defending. Yeah, they're going to take the tier, tier two, two top. tower top. That's yeah. going to go down. And yeah. Jug TP's in. They say, fine, you guys can have our middle if you want. We're yeah, gonna they're just going to take, take Megas. Here. Oh no. Yep. Is this where they look now, to commit to a, to a base they race? They have to go for the throne. They have to get the T4 towers and threaten the throne. That's the only thing they can do. Yep, they're making the ping. They're making the call. There they go this for the tier 4 towers. So can they defend this? They need to get back here and, and keep their Well, base Juggernaut's alive. TP's on cooldown. Enchantress doesn't have one. Venge is going to yeah. TP back. Darkseer can. So will the Death Prophet. That's a three-man yeah. rotation. They stun out the Nature's Prophet. Tisho's going to throw out the Hex on Ventral Spirit immediately. And because the Death Prophet ults out, they're able to drop to drop just the one. Tisho might be able to escape. Yeah, you yep. know what? It was it was good on the part of Tisho. That that's exactly what they needed to do. They saved their base, um, at least for now. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, Jerry just got thrown up onto the cliff, and then Slark picked him off. Forcing yeah. an enchant buyback. 
Yeah, they bought back because they're gonna go for the victory here, and Lion immediately notices that this game is all on this uh, this top lane right here. It looks like not today. They've got another 50 seconds before Black Hole. I'm sure they're aware of it. They want to go press their advantage and end the game here. There's no split pushing currently being done. Two lanes are about to pour into their base here. This is their moment. This is going to be the most difficult high ground defense of the game for T-Show here. They need another, what is it, 35 seconds on Black Hole. It looks like he might be saving up for uh, just a yellow blank or maybe buyback. But oh, geez, I don't know. I think with the Slark. Enigma, he needs to just... Man. I don't know. I feel like if, you, if your Slark dies, you probably might just lose the game anyways. Maybe he just buys a Basher here and just and just goes for like one more last hurrah because they're going to lose a lot of their base in the process of him dying too if he does need to buy back. Good initiation on Enchantress here, but Lion gets immediately uh, silenced as he blinks in, so no all going to come out there. Oh, Lanaro, he's able to get a great blink but and he lasso. Enchantress. Is that enough? She bought back. Yeah, She's she down for a that. minute. Smart goes in, they find the Death Prophet. She's vulnerable here, gets glimmered in Yule's stuff. Beautiful four man Dark Seer combo. Oh, the black he hole immediately canceled, canceled though. Is Slark oh, gonna be able to get out? Disaster. No, he's gonna fall. Buyback immediately coming out from Slark. The Death yeah, Prophet ultimate is going. Gonna They're gonna look to pressure your, your this high now. Taking too much damage here. <sighs> Enigma has buyback, but it won't even matter. He doesn't have his ultimate. He's gonna use it anyway. The yeah, Lotus Sword's been procced out. Oh, Nature's Prophet's just immediately gonna fall. Wow. Oh no. Oh my goodness. The Radiant yeah. of Mega Creeps. Dark Seer, man, came in with the clutch four man combo. And the immediate silence coming out GG. A pause and GG. Uh, that's kind of BM. Yeah, that's kind of BM. Yeah, the BM pause. Yeah. So, but, um... Alright, let's get this game officially over, boys. <laughs> Vengeful Spirit. The end game blink pickup. Um... There it okay, is. There, there it goes. Yeah. All right. I'm wondering what's going on. It's only one of those things where everyone DCs except one player. Yeah. They wait until not today's entire lineup leaves and then they claim victory. Right. Right. Does that work? I don't think that's exactly how it works. Yeah. No, that's hilarious. All right, man. <laughs> I gotta say, like, um, T Show, they they took some shots. I mean. There were times where they got punished for their aggressive play on the map, but they took a lot of towers out. They threatened Rax. They took a lane. They threatened the throne. I mean, they played a pretty good game, but not today. Just a little more cohesive with their play style and their team fight. And unfortunately, the Enigma was not able to do anything that game. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to take a